Good evening, this is Eli Perlman's Torch for Philly Soccer Page. Mike Cervetio has bailed on me uh, for the evening, uh, and who knows where Kevin Kincaid is, so we've draft drafted in someone who might be better than both of them, Matt DeGeorge from the Delco Times. Welcome, Matt. I guess we'll certainly see. Good to be here. So, a rough night for the Union after going on the road and, and picking up an important win in Montreal. They come home, walk out onto the field knowing that both New York City FC and Montreal have lost today and, and can't get the job done. Uh, losing one nothing on a goal that was uh, entirely preventable. Um, obviously not the result they wanted. Some positives, it was an end-to-end -end game, but in the end, only two shots on goal from the Union. Vincent Noguera came back for his first start since, uh, since his injury. How did you think he looked? I think... You know, Vincent's a weird player and that when he's good, he can go through and he'll pop up for a moment. It'll be good. But on a day like today, uh, I think the ple the pieces around him just weren't good enough. So you needed him to be more and he wasn't. And maybe that's a little bit too much to ask for a guy who's been out for a month. But it was just one of those performances from Vincent and really from everyone else that it just wasn't good enough in really every aspect. And that's why they leave here with no points tonight. Yeah, Jim Curtin mentioned the rust of getting back to full fitness. There there were plenty of times where he left to pass, not short, not long, just the person he expected to be there wasn't there, and, and that, that happens, and it's it's been troublesome for the Union to, to have so many injuries. Um, when you look at this game, the Union have been relying on, on Sebastian Latou for goals of late, but it's been a trade-off. It's a numbers game with Latou. He'll, he'll run 80 minutes and, and make a lot of mistakes, leave a lot of chances on the table, but then bag that one. And, and if he doesn't bag that one, it's, it's a pretty negative performance. What did you think of, of Latou? Um, obviously got hauled off uh, towards the end of the game. I think he was good in the first half. It, it just seemed like the pieces just weren't fitting together. There was a lot of you know, good hold-up play from C.J. Sapong, but then the header off of a long ball found nobody. And there was some runs and there were some passes into dangerous areas, but nobody was there. And then uh, I think what the really disturbing part is from a union perspective is that after Fagundes scores that goal, uh, and it is entirely preventable, as you said, there was no real response. Sapong had that header off of a corner immediately afterwards, but there was just an odd feeling, I think, in PPL Park tonight of... You know, knowing after you go down a goal, you need two because a draw does you nothing. And that was kind of, you know, the elastic kind of broke for them. There was nothing in the chase afterwards. I don't even think they troubled Bobby Shuttleworth with a shot on goal after that goal or maybe even in the second half. So it, overall, yes, some of the tactical pieces weren't there, but the overarching energy pieces, it just wasn't there at all tonight. And I think one issue that really comes in as you get to late in the games is, you look at the back four, and specifically Steven Vittoria, the balls are just getting cleared out of the back to no one. Uh, you know, this Revs team can string passes together with, with most teams in MLS. When you look at Lee Nguyen running an offense and all the, the, the smart, quick players they have, but also the really solid, obviously Jermaine Jones, but also Scott Caldwell, just rolling with the ball, keeping it on their feet, and, and keeping the ball moving. So when the Union do win it back, and, and Jim Curtin mentioned how frustrated he was, to see Vittoria just thoughtlessly just plastering the ball as far as he could, giving it straight back, was, you know, it's not just disheartening, but it also it, it kills your, your energy levels because it's so much harder to play defense, and, and they're fighting to win the ball, and they're fighting to win the ball, and they finally win it back, and then immediately concede possession. So... Let's talk quickly through the goal. Um, Ray Gaddis had a rough night tonight, uh, both defensively as, as Lee Nguyen and Rowe and Fagundes kind of gave him a working over, but in possession, a lot of balls dribbled out of bounds, passed out of bounds, and it was one of those balls that went out of bounds that came right back at them, and both center backs own some fault where Vittoria doesn't get to Davies, allowing him to flick the ball through, and Richie Marquez was, was dropping back, dropping back, and you know, as you said, when I just spoke with him in the locker room, he was he was hoping to try and get Fagundes to make a move so he could poke it out, and Fagundes smartly didn't and, and shot across his body. Nothing Andre Blake could have done on the goal. Yeah, it's one of those cases where that play was kind of the worst of, of both worlds because Vittoria steps and doesn't get there, and Marquez drops and just keeps dropping and dropping, and you can't give a guy like Fagundes that much space. And, you know, Andre Blake had an okay day today, and there was nothing he could do on that shot. When If Fagundes is going to get that much time and fizzle a shot across the grain, there's, there's not a lot of goalies that are going to stop that. 
And, you know, it was one of the few really bad moments that the defense had. But when the attack's just not there, it's not good enough. And to get back to your earlier point, you know, possession numbers are always weird. But for the Union to be chasing from the 51st minute on and to still not be able to maintain the majority of possession in that second half, that says all you need to know about how effective they were in trying to cobble together an attack and trying to you know, just string passes together in, in general terms. We look at all the attack-minded subs, and even Jay Heaps, two of his three subs are attack-minded guys, and T.L. Bunbury and Juan Agadello, you know, guys to really kind of push the pace. And Juan Agadello is the best sub of this game, who had the most impact. I mean, he could have scored a goal. He had a couple dangerous chances where if Blake's not quick off his line, maybe he strikes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those games where I think it's a little hard to fault maybe Jim Curtin and some of his tactical moves. But at the same time, there's no doubt that the execution was not there at all. And that's what comes back to bite them. And before we get to the big final Chaco Maidana shaped talking point, uh, <sighs> Andre Blake is the starter for this team for my money. To see him come out, he has the one save flying to his left. He's off his line quickly, uh, both denying, I believe it was Agadello at the end, uh-huh. and and to, to gather the ball at Charlie Davies' feet a couple of times. His reading of the game was excellent. His agility is excellent. His hands were excellent. Uh, there's no reason not to play him. He is your num- he is the number one pick in the draft. He is in full international, and he's playing well. So, provided he's with the team and including the Open Cup final for me, he's the goalkeeper for the Union. I don't know if you have any different thoughts on that. I think that's going to be an interesting thing. I mean, we look at the progression that Jim Curtin went through last year, and you know he said pretty early in the face of a guy that on paper should have been. The, the guy in Rice and Bowley, he said, you know, this is Zach McMath's game because McMath did a lot to get get him there. And, you know, on uh, John McCarthy's actually done more this year when you look at navigating them through, what, one clean sheet, two penalty kick shootouts, he's done a great deal to get there. But at least Curtin kind of has the luxury. The regular season race is, is run. They're not making the playoffs at this point. I think that's a, that's a pretty... It's a pretty well-known fact based on what happened tonight. He has the chance to really evaluate them. Um, McCarthy's probably going to get the start next week. Um, I I would say almost certainly he's going to get the start next week with Blake away on international duty. So there's some time to really see who the hot hand is and, and, and whatnot. I would think Jim Curtin, knowing what he does about the Open Cup, valuing it the way that he does, is going to put his best 11 out there. And if that leads to an awkward conversation with John McCarthy... I think Curtin's going to have that conversation and say, listen, Andre Blake is, is the guy if Blake continues to prove to be the guy. So let's talk about it now as we wrap up. Chaco Maidana, we're late in stoppage time. He goes with the two-hand shove out of frustration into the back of Lee Nguyen. It's a foul, nothing more. And then Chris Penso hesitates and then goes without any thought, you know, without any you know, discussion with the AR goes right to his back pocket and whips that red card out. Um, it was hard to tell for us live, but replays and, and we've heard a lot that, that there was a spit and we saw the, the notes from, mm-hmm. from Chris Penso's report that he said that he saw um, the player spit on, on the player on the ground, being Lee Nguyen. So Maidana in the locker room, you know, protested his innocence, claiming he chews gum, and which he does, mm-hmm. and that, the, that that's the, true, yeah. his gum chose an inopportune moment to fall out of his mouth. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a suspension. Obviously, the red card. There may be additional games added. Mm-hmm. You know, spitting is not a, a dangerous foul that could hurt someone, but it is considered the the largest sign of disrespect in soccer, and and, and is rightly looked at that way. So it'll be interesting to see. If they add additional games, I wouldn't be shocked to see them add maybe one or two more games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you think about that. I, I think it's a possibility. I don't know that he really reaches the violent conduct three-game threshold. Um, we've seen a couple of union red cards already this year. If you recall, um, I guess Fred's red, and also for Pfeffer, they both had a game uh, tacked on that was, I guess, deemed a, a violent conduct issue. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, Maidana does chew gum during games, which is a statement I can't believe that I have to defend. But, uh, you know, it's possible I haven't had a chance to see the tape. Uh, Chris Prenso, the referee, was very adamant in the post-game pool reporting that it was a deliberate spitting motion in Wynn's direction. Uh, so, you know, if, if Penso 
goes to that as part of the MLS disciplinary pro, uh, approach, and he says, yeah, I saw this guy spit at him, and it becomes Maidana's word against Penso's, and you have video evidence. I find it very hard to believe that Maidana's going to escape without at least one or two extra games, um, possibly one or two games in addition to the one card the, the red card suspension, meaning that he'll be out of action for most of September. So it's just kind of an insult to injury thing. I think back to, uh, I guess a couple years ago, was it the Kansas City game where they lost a really bad home game and then Amobi ended up with the two yellows and the red. Like it just seems exactly like that of the playoff hopes are dying. And then, you know, here's a little bit extra water on whatever little embers are still glowing. So uh, it's... You know, as if this evening wasn't fatal enough for their playoff hopes, I think the Maidana thing is a kind of a fitting wrap-up. So unfortunately, that is how we have to wrap it up uh, for Eli Perlman's torch and, and the as-good-as-advertised Matt DeGeorge. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching and uh, come out Sunday and watch some rugby. They're, they're setting up the field and the posts for the U.S. Eagles against the Harlequins from the uh, Premier League in England. Thanks for watching.